first thing people usually want to know is how come it's histories of memories? First of all, why are they all plural? And second of all, why history and memory? Aren't they the same thing? Is it a history of psychology? So the way I would explain it is the past is everything that happened and history is what we remember about it. So you're already remembering something when you think about the past and it turns out there's lots of different ways to remember the past. Sometimes we call it history and other times we say, oh, it's what my uncle told me or it's what my grandma told me or it's what I remember from when I was a little kid. So it turns out there's all kinds of memories that are always involved in our lives that have to do with lived experience of having lived through the past. And most of the time people will say, oh, what I lived through, that's not what's important. History is what's important. That's what happened when somebody made a big decision or somebody won a war or a bomb got dropped. That's a historical event. And then I start asking people, well, how many historical events have you lived through? And it turns out the older you get, the more historical events you have in fact lived through and you remember. So those memories are always shaping what we think we know about the past. So if the past is everything that happened and history is what we usually write about it, where's all those memories? So histories of memories is about how do people remember the past? Sometimes they call it history and sometimes they just say, I just remember. We're going to interrogate what people remember about the past. And we're not gonna say memories are always false or memories are always tricky, risky. You might forget things. Of course we forget things. History is not everything either. Nobody remembers everything about the past. History is selective. Okay, so if memory is something we can look at and say, that's a historical object, then we start asking people, how do you remember the past? And one of the ways that people do it primarily is visually. It turns out through photographs, through films you've seen, through TV shows you've watched, you have interacted with representations of the past for most of your life. You also learned history in school. And how did you learn about the past? You remember what you were taught about history. So those kinds of memories turn out to be memories that we can also talk about in histories of memories. So histories of memories is not a class about psychology. Um, it is not a class about uh, forgetting. Histories of memories is about how people choose to remember the past. How can they know what they know about the past? In the histories of memories, I've taught this to undergrads a couple of times already, and one of the really cool things we have done is we create a class archive of photographs. So each student is asked to bring a photograph that predates their own birth and has to do with their family. And we show that archive to the whole class. Everybody talks about their photographs. And then the students are asked what kind of a history project could you do if that photo archive was the only archive you had left to know anything about 20th century history? And so then they create um, research projects based on that photo archive. So I'm really curious to see what would happen if we did the same kind of project with students who probably would have to go back into, let's say pre-1920s, to find family photographs that predate their own birth. It's going to be a very different kind of project, and I'm excited to see what people might bring to that. Towards the end of the class, we read a short story by the author Borges, and it's called Funes the Memorias, which is a very wordy title for this poor guy who could not forget anything. He is burdened by memory. And Borges asks us to think about what does it mean truly to never forget anything. Forgetting and remembering are always selective. So what are our commitments to remembering? That's where the histories of memories come in and that's what I want us to be thinking about in our course together.